Hello, uh, this is a pretty rare non, uh, like just audio, video. Um, I'm actually trying to talk about this one. Uh, it's a little project I've been working on. Uh, it's pretty much just abusing breakpoints within the JVM to, well, breakpoint stuff. Uh, works at a very basic instruction level. Uh, so I am using JNI for some basic things here, such as just getting the methods. Uh, but beyond that, this is pretty abstract and it should work on any uh, distribution of the JVM. It's pretty cool. Uh, I do have some quick samples here. So, for example, uh, here's my test module. I am just loading my own DLL through here. Uh, you can load your module however you want, you know, injection, whatever. Probably use a JNI agent as well if you wanted. Uh, but I do have this pretty simple method here. I mean, you can view the source code right here. You can see it's just like six instructions here. I load, I load, add, get static, add, return. So really basic. I just kind of added the uh, field in here as well just to show a little bit more. So let's uh, take a small look at this. So I do just kind of display all the bytecode here. Uh, pretty simple. But then I do have capability of actually setting breakpoints on some of this. And I'll show what that looks like uh, just a little bit. So the breakpoint stuff, it's pretty interesting. Uh, the breakpoint setup, and this will all be open source. Um, I don't know when, once I clean this project up and make it look a little bit better. Uh, but, you know, I kind of just find the um, breakpoint routine, which is generated by the uh, generator, template table and generator. And then I acquire, there's two methods used in the breakpoint function. And one of those would be getting the original bytecode. Uh, and the other one would be the actual uh, breakpoint callback. So getting the original bytecode, pretty obvious. It... Um, Gets the original bytecode that was at the uh, you know breakpointed instruction, and then once the breakpoint callback is finished, then it uh, executes that original bytecode. So pretty simply, I just have a little handler for it, and same with the breakpoint handler, just a really simple callback system uh, to use, and then you know some helper functions such as adding breakpoints, uh, removing breakpoints, removing all breakpoints. Pretty simple overall. So I'll show you what it looks like in action. Um, this current setup I have right here, it's placing a breakpoint on the final instruction of simple add, which would be the return instruction or OXAC. So if I run this now, you can see here's the print statements, printing off all the bytecodes. You can see when I, I load zero, I load one, add, get static field, add, and then return. So pretty simple. Uh, this is just printing out the bytecode. So now if I actually try to execute it, so let's just put in like four, right? You get uh, a breakpoint hit. So you can see the top of the stack at the return was four, four. And you can see uh, the Java program down here printing out uh, the result, which is four, four as well. So pretty cool. And, you know, I can keep doing it. Oops. So I, yeah, keep doing it. Pretty simple. And then, you know, I can press home. I can remove the breakpoints. And there you go, no more breakpoints. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Um, so you can also change uh, any info on here as well. So since I know this is the return breakpoint, I can just do something like this. So I can get the uh, address of the return value. And then, you know, I can just set it to, yeah, let's just like 1337 just to show. So now if I, you know, input anything, doesn't matter what, it'll always give you uh, 1337. So there's a lot you can do with this. Let's look at, uh, for example, the add instruction. So that would be um, oops, two. So now this is going to be the add, and then we can just loop through this and print out uh, the operands of the add. Oops. And then this. That should be fine. And of course you can set multiple breakpoints uh, really easily as well. So, yeah, just like that. So you can see it's adding 32 and eight together uh, on this add breakpoint. And of course that would be um, oops, next int, which is obviously the input as well as the just static integer eight. So uh, that works just fine. And once again, you can remove the breakpoints, do whatever you want. So uh, just to show you another example, I can do, uh, let's just place another breakpoint just up here. 
So we'll copy this exact same thing right here and we'll instead of place it at uh, OX01. And we can print off the number of operands currently on the uh, operand table, if there are any, of course. Um, so in this case, there will be operands, but the way that I'm currently getting it, I'm, I don't, I'm not like analyzing the stack, so we'll say there's no operands. Of course, there are um, current values on the stack, but I just don't have a programmatic way of getting it. So yeah, I'll show you right here. So once again, you can see, yeah, it hit. It's getting the I load one instruction uh, saying there's no operands though. Uh, I'm pretty sure I could fix this. It's pretty simple how it works, but analyzing uh, in runtime, how big the operand stack is at that part, I haven't looked into too much yet. But yeah, this is um, some pretty cool stuff, I think. And you know, if I, I can modify any of these instructions again, pretty cool stuff. Uh, it's a little hacky in some parts right now, but I do plan on fixing that a little bit later, but we'll see. Yeah, so that's pretty much uh, my video for today. I'll probably, uh, I might make a blog post about this. I'm not so sure yet. Um, yeah, we'll see though. All right, thanks.